congrats on the movie. I really enjoyed it. You're great in it. Um, Thank you. What attracts you to doing a musical? Uh, I thought it would be fun to sing all those songs. And like in one of the films I was doing before, I had to pretend to be a rock star. And I sang songs in that. It's quite good. Like, it's not that difficult if you've got a good teacher. And we had this man, Ron. He's a good teacher. So he taught all of the people, Tom Cruise, everyone. So, you know, I thought it would be a laugh. Yeah, I didn't know you'd have such a good voice. Did you Thanks. surprise yourself or did you know that it was in there? I didn't surprise myself because I hear me talking all of the time and like singing. But do you everything. sing in the shower and stuff and that's how you knew, is it? It'd be weird to surprise yourself. I'm just thinking about that as a concept. <laughs> oh God, what have I done? <laughs> That'd be horrible. <laughs> like that's what murderers say, isn't it? I don't know what happened. I blacked out and I woke up and I, my wife was just dead. I cuddled her too hard. <laughs> So you didn't surprise yourself? No, I knew what I was going to do and then I did it. Okay. Like, so, but like, uh, there was something else I was interested in thinking about there. Um, yeah, it's alright to do a musical, isn't it? It's jolly. Were you surprised by Tom? Because you can be surprised by other people, so... Yes, Tom, you can be surprised I didn't expect people. him to have a good voice. Yeah, he's got... No, of course he's going to do anything. He wouldn't do it if he weren't going to be brilliant at it. He's a calculating <laughs> cinematic genius, isn't he? He knows what he's doing. And like, and, Oh, so I wasn't surprised by that either. It's not like I go through life not being surprised. I'm surprised <laughs> moment to moment. I'm not like listless, like, oh God, oh no, that's how oh, there's a rainbow, oh, how boring. <laughs> like, like, no, I'm in a state of awe and wonder at the majesty of our universe. But what was I going to say? Oh yeah, do you know what? They meddled with my voice a bit, like, oh, do they, they use I a bit think of auto a bit. Tune type stuff. I sound like Michael Jackson when he's singing Ben in like, the, the song with Alec Baldwin, like, uh, I can't fight this feeling anymore. I can yes. feel this bit where he's going, <laughs> I sort of think, I can't do that with my voice. It sounds like a sort of uh, silvery bubbles right. rising in a stream. That was a bit of a moment though on screen. I think that almost uh, took, th that was almost the moment of the whole film. Do and you think it is, mate? I think it is. That moment you have with Alec and you have the smooch and all that jazz. How was I it loved to do? it. I love watching Did that you love bit it? of the film. Yeah, I sort of wish that like, you know, I jump up in his arms, don't I? And he carries me. I sort of wish a bit that he jumped in my arms, so that meant that I was in charge, you know? Are you strong enough though? Would you have been no. working at I mean, no. he's pretty, you look at him. I mean, he's, yeah. he's lost quite a lot of weight actually since then, but I mean, Alec Baldwin looks like his bones might be made out of something heavier than normal people's bones, doesn't he? Like, he's, a strong, he's a strong presence as well as everything, doesn't he? Oh my God, he's such a strong presence, I really like him. In reality, is he like that as well? Because that's what I get from watching him on TV, obviously I've never met him, so... He's lovely and kind and sweet and tender, but yeah, he's got a lot of strength. He'd be a good person to have in a, a war. Like, say we was going to have a war against someone, yeah. you go, right, no, I'll have Alec on my team. Right. And working with all these people, all these famous actors like Tom Cruise and Alec and Catherine Zeta-Jones, mm. do you learn from them when you work, work with people like this? Yeah. Like, are you still learning or are you kind of your proper movie star now, so you don't... You do, uh, like, how, it's like you learn from watching them, like, like, say Tom Cruise, you learn, he's so diligent and hardworking. You know, like he sort of approaches it very meticulously, and so when you're around him, because he's the alpha character, you mm. think, oh, I better behave how he behaves. From Alec Baldwin, you learn, like, you know, he's, Tom Cruise is very focused on the career. Alec Baldwin, you can see, exists in other realms. He's interested in, probably he'll go into politics or something, won't he? Yeah. You know, so like, I, from Alec Baldwin, I learned, oh, okay, it's okay to be sort of studious and, uh, you know, to be interested in all sorts of different stuff. From Tom Cruise, it's interesting the way if you want something done, you can see he just go, he like laser beams through it. You mentioned Alec Baldwin and politics. Would you ever consider going into politicians? Politics even, I think you'd make a great politician. I like your first question. Let's go into politicians. <laughs> go into every orifice, bam! <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I don't, like, no. Because I think no. that the solutions are spiritual. I think that politics in itself, like, it, that should just be admin. It shouldn't be centrifugal to life. They're just like bureaucrats. The politicians shouldn't be in a position of power. They should just go, right, you lot, make sure everyone's getting enough food and the bins and that, and there's proper distribution of utilities and wealth. Like, don't let them be in charge. Look at them. Can't look at what they look like. They can't be in charge. They're maniacs. When you look at their face, like someone like Mitt Romney or David Cameron, they're not the people that should be in charge. Like, mad, weird, flat faced, peculiar people. No, no, no. It's been a mistake. <laughs> Before I go, uh, the MTV Movie Awards, obviously you hosted it this year. When you kind of, in the, that job, you have to kind of throw out a few disses to the celebrities. Do you ever bump into I tried not to. You did a little bit though, you kind of, a couple of people. If you look like, at it carefully, I'm always being quite self-effacing. What bit? Because I don't like, hurt. if I thought I'd hurt someone's feelings, I'd feel sad. It wasn't really hurting, but you, you said Kim Kardashian had a, even took the attention off your relationship with Katy Perry by having even shorter marriage. So yeah. that's a joke on me. Fair point. Kerry Kim Dash is not to watch that and go, Bleh! And but also, it's like, you know, that is, so that, that's a joke on me. Go on, mm -hmm. what else? Because I would never like to hurt someone's feelings. No, fair, fair. I just was going to say, do you ever meet them backstage and somebody actually takes it personally? As in, takes it, th they might think, uh, think about it too much. 
Sometimes you do, like, I remember when I'd done the NME Awards, right, we made this joke about the Arctic Monkeys, because when the Arctic Monkeys first became famous, all journalists in sort of broadsheet press were going, they're from Sheffield, and yet they're referencing Romeo and Juliet! It's remarkable! <laughs> right? And I went, just because they're from Sheffield, why shouldn't they yeah. reference Romeo and Juliet? And I goes, what should their first single have been called? I bet you look good in a coal mine. I bet you look good on discovering that your brother's killed your pet kestrel, right? <laughs> and like, and they thought that they thought I was digging them out. But I was like, no, the, the joke is on the media. Yeah. The joke is on the perception that, like, that just because you're northern lads, you wouldn't have those kind of references. So. With me, I think if you listen carefully, I would never want to hurt a person unless that person is powerful and, and being abusive. To Good man, I'm sure the Sebi's appreciated. Thanks a million, and congratulations on the movie again. Cheers, Russell. mate.